What do you think of when you hear the word capitalism? Money. Money, 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 money. Investment. Opportunity. Material things. Stuff. Inequality. Capitalism is essentially the only economic system around in the world today and it's at a bit of a crossroads. How it evolves will affect the lives of billions of people. There's no exact moment when capitalism started. In the 16th and 17th centuries, feudalism gave way to something new, particularly in what is now the UK and the Netherlands. Before that, the majority of people stayed close to home, never really moving more than five miles from their birthplace. They tilled fields owned by a feudal lord in exchange for a place to live and protection. Land was the most valuable commodity, not money. But that started to change after a plague swept across the continent, wiping out 60% of Europe's population. A new class of merchants emerged and started expanding trade across and outside of Europe. Gradually, countries in Europe began transitioning from rural feudalism to urban capitalism. The main thing that sets a capitalist system apart from previous systems is the reinvestment of money made from selling things back into production. This is called growth, and it is the main economic goal of capitalism. For example, a feudal lord only had need to create as many shirts as he would imagine wearing. Consumption was the limit, but under capitalism, the Dutch East India Company could take the money from selling cloth to buy a fleet of ships. Then it will use the ships to sell even more cloth to even more people. Accumulation becomes the goal. In capitalism, the resources needed to make things are mostly controlled by companies in competition with one another. What gets made and how much it costs you and me, well, that's determined by supply and demand. And in this system, there are two ways of making money. You can either rent out your labor or you can own things like property or equipment. For the shirt you're wearing, the people who own the land and cotton and sewing machines take a cut. And the wage laborers who do the farming or sew it together make a set fee for their time. Historically, it's much easier and faster to make money by owning things rather than by working. Which is why the richest people in the United States, for example, make 75% of their money from passive ownership or investments. We're talking upwards of $21 million per rich person every year. The accomplishments of capitalism are impressive. From an era of peasant farmers, capitalism brought us here, where a tiny robot vacuums your floor every day. On average, people have an easier life than a few centuries ago. Literacy has gone up, the child mortality rate has gone down, and today, you are much more likely to die from obesity than from starvation. But capitalism has facilitated atrocities along the way. All that cotton used to make those shirts that helped drag the world out of feudalism, a good chunk of it was picked by people kidnapped from Africa, turned into slaves. This is a major criticism of capitalism. It doesn't look out for the vulnerable and disadvantaged. Another criticism of capitalism is that it's not very good at choosing what to produce. Why is it that in the United States, it's much easier to hire a robot vacuum than it is to get healthcare? Or consider Brazil. One fifth of the Amazon rainforest has been burned or cleared to make room for soy fields and cattle pastures. If we keep this up, we could lose the Amazon forever. In this case, the market is choosing to benefit a handful of beef companies in the short term at a potentially grave cost to those who rely on the rainforest for oxygen. The truth is, you cannot have infinite growth on a planet with finite resources. Capitalism thrives at mass distributing luxury goods. It's less adept at meeting basic needs or long-term planning that requires curbing growth. 
What this tends to mean for laborers is a lower quality of life and a shorter one. In the US again, men in the richest 1% live almost 15 years longer than men in the poorest 1%. And the gap between the rich and the poor is widening. These stats are devastating, but they're not new. In the 1900s, the richest 1% in France and England owned over half of their nation's wealth. And throughout history, the bottom 50% of capitalist societies own essentially nothing. And this hasn't changed, well at least not yet. One way to address the problem would be to adopt a kinder capitalism built with stronger safety nets that can help look after the disadvantaged and the vulnerable. This could involve universal basic incomes, which would pay a set amount to every person to make sure the poorest don't fall too far into poverty. Recently, Finland did a trial run with 2,000 unemployed people, paying them a small stipend every month for two years. The early results showed negligible impact on employment, but gains in health and happiness. Another option is for capitalism to evolve into something else, like socialism. Countries could establish social wealth funds like Norway has done. In that system, each citizen owns an equal share of a fund that buys up capital. By now, the state owns almost 60% of the country's wealth. In the US, Alaska does something very similar with its oil. The state puts aside a quarter of everything it makes from its mineral royalties into a wealth fund. It's worth over $60 billion now and pays out between $1,000 and $2,000 to each citizen every year. It's cut poverty by up to 20% and is wildly popular, even in conservative Alaska. Of course, a viable option is to continue on the path that we're currently on, to prioritise growth over everything else. However, in doing that, it could mean the deaths of billions of people when the worst effects of climate change hit. Capitalism has upended how societies are structured. It's improved the lives of tens of millions, hugely reducing poverty, illiteracy and infant mortality. But it's not working for everyone. What capitalism evolves into will affect nearly every human being on the planet. The good news is that we can choose how society is structured, but we need to decide carefully and soon.